Hey guys. Hey, I'm so glad you're able to join. I see I've got several people on the on the live today. I've got Pam. Hi, Pam. And Teresa. Uh, Pam V. Hi, I hope you guys are well. Um, let's see. Karen. Hi, Karen. Uh, Chai's Craft. Sorry, don't know your, your name unless it's Chai. <laughs> um, thanks for uh, joining me tonight. I hope you are enjoying the Pendant series. I'm having a blast doing it. I think it's just so much fun and I'm really, um, really having so much fun. Let me know that you guys can see and hear me okay. And just give me a thumbs up or something so I know that you're, you can hear. Let me see if I could get somebody to confirm that all is well. I'm going to turn my, I didn't turn my studio lights on. Let me turn my lights on. Uh, there we go. Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks, Pam, for letting me know you guys can hear and see me. Okay. All right, great. So anyway, um, hope you're enjoying the pendant series. Um, tonight, I thought that what we would do is, um, try a little bit of fluid art now paint pour i don't know that technically i can say that these are paint poured they're such a small surface um but we'll try a few things and just see how it works mostly what i wanted you to do is just see another way to get a background on your very small pendants i'm using two inch discs which we'll see in just a moment um, but just another way to get a background just to try something out now i've been paint pouring since about 2016 maybe so it's been a few years um, and I'm just have a little bug to get back into it. So I'm going to start small, but I found some things that I thought you might like to see. Uh, I was kind of excited to see them. And when I saw these uh, particular paints by folk art, I thought, okay, these might be perfect um, to try some fluid art with. So let's see what we can do. So let me see who else I've got on there. I've got Alice and Kim, Kathy, uh, Janet, Jesse. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera down and we're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> okay, I think you can see my table. I am going to um, see if I zoom in. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. It might get a little, um, a little blurry if I do. That's the most I can zoom. So I think that looks okay from what I can see. So I hope we're in good shape here. So this is the one uh, little pendant that I had posted on my um, on the invite. And um, this is just one of the first little ones that I did. And I just thought it was so pretty. I've already given the other way, the other one away. Piper, Piper wanted it. So she's got a new little pendant. But I just think this is so, I don't know, you guys. I just think it's gorgeous. Let me know what you think. I just love the flow of the paint. And then when we add our little dots on it, I think it just really comes alive and we can um, bring, you know, some new colors and introduce some pattern into this pretty pour. So I hope you are going to enjoy this. So let me show you the paints that I found that kind of made me think that I wanted to go ahead and try this. So of course I, I'm a, you know, I'm a supply junkie. <laughs> and so I tried lots of different paints and things. So I was at I think I got these particular ones at uh, Hobby Lobby, and I don't know that I've seen them anywhere else. But these are the folk art, and they're called marbling paints. I don't really know what they're exactly for. Um, hmm. um, I don't know if it was meant for marbling on paper or whatever. But anyway, when I saw these, I thought, well, I'm going to try them out because I think these would really work for um, this kind of fluid art background um, that we're going to look at. So. I think they have 10 colors. I think I have all the colors. It's really basic. And we're gonna go ahead and look at some other ways to make our own. But um, I think we're gonna start out with these. So these are the colors. There's a darker blue, orange. Um, this color is aqua, red, white. Another sort of uh, just called green. What's this one? Sour apple, yellow, black and pink. So we're going to go ahead and try these and see what we like. Um, now these are more fluid. So it does say to shake these up. Um, so we're, we'll shake them up. I'm just going to use, whoop, whoop, 
that one went flying. I'm just going to use some different colors here. Um, so we'll just try some different things and I'll shake them up and then we'll get going. I think I'll do this series of colors first and see how we like that. The other thing, oh, before I get started, I want to show you some of the prep that I did. So I am using um, these two inch discs. And um, these are the ones I, I have some of these in my shop and I it, just because I like them, the, what I like about these now, of course, this is all personal preference. So you guys use what you have and what you uh, what you prefer. But the thing I liked about these is that um, they've got a, they're a little bit beveled. I don't think you can probably see that they're a little bit beveled. And I just, I don't know, I just like the look of that. And they're beveled on each edge, each side. So I just think that's really pretty. So I've got these, I've prepped them. I just did a flat black paint. I usually use the DecoArt chalky paint, um, thinned with a little bit of water and a couple of coats. And then I have on the back, now this is just, again, your preference, because these are, this is art. So you don't have to keep a clean back. I did go ahead and just tape these, just using some painter's tape. Uh, or masking tape, I um, put my tape on and I just cut around it with a pair of scissors um, to get it close to the edge, make sure I have that edge down and sort of burnish down. And then I just put a little tape handle on it, right? I just created myself a handle so that I can dip these um, and have a way to hold on to them. And then I just have a, um, a little cookie um, grate, you know, what are these, what are these called? Now, all of a sudden, I lost what these are called. Anywho, when you make cookies, you put them on here to cool, cooling rack. <laughs> anyway, so I just have this old cooling rack that I um, put these on so that they could stay a little bit level. I'm not worried over much about leveling, but it's just a way so I don't have to take the tape off right away. I can just sort of slide that in and, um, and let those sit until the paint cures. So anyway, that's how I've prepped all of these. And again, just a little handle as a way for me to dip them. And then I have um, just some foam plates. You can use um, you know, paper plate or plastic wrap or something. I'm just trying to keep my work surface clean. Now I usually use the silicone. I have always a silicone mat, which is really pretty easy to clean up, but I prefer not to clean up a huge mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these little foam plates. So the thing, again, that I like about this is I, I think this is maybe really accessible for people that want to start, you know, maybe you haven't done any kind of fluid art or um, pour, paint pours or anything like that. There's really a lot involved. If any of you have been watching YouTube channels, uh, any of the YouTube videos on this, there's, there's so much that you can do with this. Um, we're not going to add any silicone. We're not going to do any other additives other than pouring medium and paint. In this case, I don't even have to use a pouring medium because these are already mixed um, and they're pretty fluid already. So I don't need to do anything with those paints. I don't need to thin them. I don't need to add any additive to it. And that's what I really found attractive when I saw these paints. I thought, well, you know what? For people that want to experiment and do a fun background, this is great for them, right? Beca and for me too, because I... Um, maybe you want to be start small. You don't want to have a huge mess um, that you might have with larger canvases. You want to try it out, see if you like the look. And then if you, you know, if it's something you're interested in, you can invest in whatever um, materials or um, supply that you want to purchase. Thank you, Kim. It's a cookie cooling rack. I, for the life of me, couldn't remember what the heck that thing was called. Um, <clears throat> and Jeannie wants to know, where did I get the disc from? Do you mean these, these um, blanks? Leanna, uh, these I have in my shop. They're just a two inch wooden disc with a little bevel and they have a hole in them. I also have uh, another type, which is a little bit, um, it's really, I would call this dome, not, I would call this beveled. It's a little flat bevel on the edge. This one's actually domed and it doesn't have a hole in it. It's um, like for a glue on bale. Um, so I have a couple different types. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started and take a look at these paints. So I said I was going to use blue. Let me make sure I got the shake shaken. 
And all I'm going to do is just put a few drops down. I'm not going to, see, I'm just, I'm not making a huge puddle here. I'm just um, getting my paint down. And uh, that's what I, that's one of the things that I found attractive. And see how this paint is really already, I don't know if you can see if I can, I don't think I can pour that. Maybe you can see it. Mm, I don't know that you're going to be able to see that really well. Um, but it's pretty fluid. It's not as stiff as, or as um, firm as a regular craft paint. It's, it is definitely more fluid. I'm just going to get my colors down. I think I'll add a little bit of white. And so this is the fluid art part where we're just going to kind of put colors together. This would be called a dip, right? This is like a dip. So I've got my wooden blank. I've got my little handle. And I'm just going to dip this. And let's see what this looks like. And there's the reveal. Now it still can move. If you've, again, if you've watched the channels, you can see that this is, it's got a nice um, bit of paint on it. Now it's not going to get necessarily um, the cells or the different lacing effect that some of the other um, you might see in some of the pouring videos because this doesn't have any kind of additive. Now I can see a few little cells. I don't know if you can see it, just some really small ones, but you can. We can move this by, um, you know, moving the paint around, letting it, letting it move, kind of moving it around a little bit to get the paint um, moved around. And so from there, hopefully, you can see that you're going to get a really nice, fun background. I'm just going to move this a little bit see what happens when we kind of tap that and get it moving. And so we can change sort of the orientation of the paint a little bit. There are some little bubbles here. So I'm going to not, I'm not going to torch it like some of the others do in their videos because this, I really want this to be something that you will want to try out and not have to like invest in a torch and all kinds of stuff. So I'll just tap those little bubbles that I see there to get rid of them. And that's our first dip. What do y'all think? Does this look like something that you might like to try? I'm going to take, I'm going to move this around just a little bit more. And we still have quite a bit of paint there. So we could paint, um, we could dip another one. And I think I will, because let's try a little something else with it. I'm trying to move this over to my cookie cooling rack. Get that moved down there. So Pam V is saying, do you think it could be done on a plastic disc instead of a wood disc? Yes, I do. I think that anything that the, the acrylic paint would adhere to is um, what you could use. Crystal wants to know how long does it take to dry? These particular paints actually dry fairly fast. However, I've been letting, so they're going to be kind of dry to the touch within, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Maybe not dry to the touch. I shouldn't have said it like that, but they'll be, you know, firming up and getting drier. It's a pretty thin coat that we're putting on in about 20 to 30 minutes. In an hour or two, they should be dry enough for you to add another layer of paint or a dot or whatever. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try another one. I'm just going to use this leftover paint and I'm going to twist this here. I'm going to add another color. What color? Mm, yellow. I'm going to add some yellow. And let's see. I don't know that these are really great color combos, but we're going to try it out anyway. And I'm going to just twist it and see what happens if I can get a different effect by just twisting the paint around. And lifting it. Oops. I kind of smushed it. So there, I, I think that's pretty. What do you guys think? Do you like that? Oh my gosh, the colors in this are gorgeous, you guys. I hope you can see that. Can you see how that purple and the yellow and um, purple kind of, or blue kind of mixed together? I've got a, like a purple going there. God, that's gorgeous. I love this. Jeez, I, I'm, 
I'm really liking this one. Okay, so anyway, that was just, we dipped in, in the same paint there and twisted to get a little different look. Now, the other thing that I wanna mention is that um, this paint is filling up the hole here. So, you know, I will go in and, and kind of open that hole back up um, so that the paint doesn't dry in there. So there's another one, beautiful, love it. I gotta move my I gotta move my cookie cooling rack somewhere else here. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a disaster in a little bit here if I don't move this. <clears throat> I gotta find some place to put it here. Hold on, give me a sec, guys. Okay, so we've got two done. How are you all finding this so far? Oh, um, Chai's Craft says it looks like Northern Lights. And Crystal wants to know how many layers do you add and do you glaze after? Um, yeah, so you can add the number of layers that you want. So for these particular pendants, like the one that I, um, I showed you as my demo, I just had one layer of paint and then I, I waited for it to dry and then I added uh, dotting to it. Um, and so that's as much as I wanted to do, but you could certainly add more layers if you wanted to do that. And actually, I'll show you when we, uh, we're going to look at some of the dried pieces and I'll show you um, what those look like and we'll, we're going to paint on those. All right. And I still even have more paint here that I could use, um, but I think I want to try some different color combinations. So this is the, um, this is again, I'm using this marbling paint from folk art. It's already a perfect consistency for this type. Uh, let's do something a little different. Let's try to get a little more like how a paint pour would work and see how that goes. So if, with a paint pour, we'd actually sort of, this is one way to do it, of course, not the only way, but we would actually pour some paint on. This is a puddle pour. We'd add a little bit in the middle maybe a little white. Maybe a little touch of black. And then we would actually just move the paint around. We could blow it with a straw. I'm going to blow it with a straw. And this is just different ways to get the paint on your surface. So you could blow it. Isn't that pretty? I might... Um, that could be, you know, you could do kind of a beach look. Um, that's a pretty popular look. Uh, get a little bit of, um, you know, different colors in there to get a beach look. Now, these were limited in the colors. There's only 10 colors in this line from Folk Art. But you can, of course, mix any of the colors that you want. I'm going to put a little more orange here to get a little better coverage there. Gonna blow this a little bit more. There you go. What do you think of this one? Do you guys like this one? So that's just using a little straw to um, to move the paint around. And you can see it's getting messy on the back. That's why I taped it. But you know what, <clears throat> if you didn't, if you weren't bothered by it being messy on the back, then you wouldn't need to tape it off like that. I, I kind of wanted them to be, um, I have a clean back. I'm just going to make sure my, my edges are covered here.
but these are little mini works of art themselves. And if you didn't even want to do anything to it, I think if um, you wanted to give this to somebody or sell it at a craft fair, that's, I think that's really pretty with maybe some bead embellishments or, a, you know, a pretty ribbon or uh, cord would be really nice. So I'm going to stop and go to the chat and see what questions everybody has and see how you're enjoying that so far. Yeah, Pam V, I think um, I like this paint. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to mix your own, but I like this marbling paint. And that's why I, I really wanted to bring, you know, to share this with you because that makes it really accessible, right? It's already all together in a bottle. You don't have to buy a whole bunch of stuff. You can just go ahead and, you know, use it straight out of the bottle. And that's what I really liked about that. Now, somebody asked a question about polymer clay. Who asked me a question about polymer clay? Um, oh, De uh, Denise is asking about how much are these? So at my Michael or at my, I got these at Hobby Lobby. Um, Pam B says she's seen them at Michael's. I haven't seen them, but you know, I didn't really look for them. I just saw these and I thought, oh, okay. They're $2.99. <clears throat> and of course, uh, Hobby Lobby puts their paints and things and so do the other stores on sale pretty regularly. So I think I bought these when they were like 30% off. So it was two, roughly two oh nine or something like that for a two ounce um, bottle. I think they go pretty far though. Hi, Sheila from Arizona. Somebody asked me about polymer clay. Who was asking about that? Hmm. Oh, could you make the disc from polymer clay, Liv? Uh, Kim is asking. Yes. And Kim, I love polymer clay. I don't know if you're a polymer clay artist, but I started like that. If you look at my earlier videos on my channel, they're all polymer clay. I um, have a hankering to get back to that. So I'm going to go back to polymer clay and I have some pendants that I'll be doing in polymer sort of mandala type pendants in polymer clay. So I hope you um, would enjoy those. Um, so Gloria, we're using this particular one is folk art marbling paint. And it, I think it comes in about 10 colors. Okay, so that's that particular paint. The other paint I have that I bought quite a long time ago actually, is this color pour premix pouring paint? This I saw at Joanne, but I all, I got these at Joanne Fabrics, and, but also um, I've seen them at um, um, Hobby Lobby. I don't know that I've seen them at Michaels, um, but Hobby Lobby. And this is another pre-mixed, and these are bigger bottles. I think they might have some smaller ones. These are eight fluid ounces. So these, um, let's try these. I haven't actually tried them yet, so. Uh, Let's try these and see what we think. These have to be shaken as well. Now the colors, I didn't get necessarily all the colors. I got um, a blue, a green, black, and this um, amethyst color. And I thought those would be pretty. I thought I had a white somewhere, but I don't actually know where it went. So let's try these and see what we think about these. I wish I could show you how these pour. I don't have a good angle since I'm doing a top down on my camera. Um, but let me see if you can tell. See if I move it. The, the paint moves a little bit more than like a regular craft paint would. It's not real runny, but it does have a little bit of movement to it. So I'm going to add. Ooh, that's a pretty color. I'll add some of the green. And let's just try it this way. I think this one looks pretty. I might pick up a little of that orange there. Ooh. Now I kind of liked when we twisted it, so let's try that again. Well, that one didn't do a whole lot. Let's try it again. Let's see how far we can go before we get mud. I don't know. I like that. It, it did start to get a little muddy. Can you see that? But I kind of like it. I like it because, you know, I think it would be a really pretty background. And I like the rings that are forming around the outside when we swirled it like that. What do you guys think of this one? So that paint looks great. I think this paint is slightly thicker. 
um, than the folk art paint. So it might take longer to dry. One thing I noticed in these paints is um, I didn't get any cracking or, or crazing, you know, that kind of how it gets kind of wrinkly or it actually just cracks. I didn't see any of that. There are bubbles that I have to, um, I have to pop. And there's my hole. Just get my hole opened up. There. Now that would be really pretty dotted on. <clears throat> so let me set that one aside. Okay, um, let's try a, a couple of different techniques, maybe, and um, see what we can do. I'm going to put a little bit more paint down here. I'm going to put a little bit of black in here, too. All right, let's dip and twist this one. All right, now, <clears throat> one thing that I wanted to, I think that's pretty, that, that's pretty. Um, I wanted to show you that we can still, we can manipulate, so we manipulated the paint by blowing on it, but we can also use one of our stylus, um, our ball styluses to move this paint around. So let's see what we can do here. Can you guys see that? Tell me if you can see it okay, because I, I can't tell. Can you see that I just added a little bit of pattern there? So you can use one of your tools to make a little bit of a pattern. Now, um, when that dries, that would be really pretty to do a, a dot painting on. And I like the way it moved the paint around and kind of creates these little bands here. Can you see how it pulled the paint and it created a little band? So, you know, these are painting techniques that are not, not new or, or not even unique to this particular style of art. But um, it's nice and fun to try to bring some of these into our, into our dot painting. Okay, there's another one down. See how fast these would go? And, I, and I'm and i not using a lot of paint. And the truth of it is, I still have a lot of paint here. I could get two, at least two more out of the paint that I've put down. And I have to tell you, I'm kind of cheap with supplies. So I like it when my supplies, um, you know, go a long way. So let me get that one out of the way. Any questions or any anyone want me to try something particular? You guys all still there? Let me see if I can hear from any of you guys to see if you're all still there. My uh, my um, <clears throat> video on my <coughs> iPad is kind of spinning a little bit. So I'm not really sure if we're having a disruption. Okay, well, I'm not hearing from anybody. I'm going to go ahead and keep going. Get a little fresh palette here. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to share with you is that, let's say you can't find these marbling paints. I have a ton of paint. And um, with a little bit of pouring medium, now I use DecoArt pouring medium. You wouldn't necessarily buy something this big. I think this big container was about $20 on sale. Um, but you don't, they, they, could do come in smaller containers. I'm going to pause you guys for just a moment.
Hey, Stephen, can you guys, can you still see me? Okay. I'm not hearing or seeing anybody, so I hope everything's okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to try this again. So I have my regular deco art paint, and I've just uh, done a one-to-one -one mix with um, this pouring medium. So I'm using a pouring medium. You could use other kinds of pouring medium. Um, you could use Liquitex or Golden or whatever. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio for paint. A little bit of water if you need to. I'm not seeing anything in the chat, you guys. So I'm not ignoring you, and I can't tell if there's been a disruption here. So I'm sorry for that if um, if it's not showing for you. So I'm going to just shake this, and I'm just going to pour some in like we've been doing. And I'm just using these little squeeze bottles uh, to mix my paint in. And again, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, a little bit of water if you need to. And I'm going to try something different. I'm actually going to try gloss enamel glitter with uh, the pouring medium. And I'd like, I'm really interested to see how that might work. I might have mixed mine a little bit thinner than the other paint. So let's see how this works. Ooh, I hope you can see the glitter in that. That is gorgeous. Oh, and it's creating some cells. I hope you can see that. Let me see if I can get you any closer. Can you see that? It's creating some little cells here uh, in here with that glitter paint. That's gorgeous. It's really pretty. Now this is a translucent, um, this, this particular gloss enamel glitter is actually will, um, it dries with a clear, kind of a clearish white background. So I'd be really interested to see how that looks. Hey, Steve. My assistant is, is on leave apparently. So that looked pretty. That's nice. Okay, let's try some different colors. Here, I'm going to go out um, and come back in my uh, my iPad and see if I can get back to you guys. Give me one minute here. Okay, well, I'm not able to actually bring that up right now, so... I don't know if I'm having a problem, but I'm just going to keep going, you guys. And hopefully, we're doing okay here. So I'm going to put a little blue. And a little green. 
I'm just going to see how these patterns look. I'll do a little bit of black. And a little bit of white. I'm not so enamored of this one. This one got a little, I think the white uh, kind of overtook this one a little bit. So let's see if we can move some of it off. You see where the hole is. I can't see it. There it is. I want to orient myself to where the hole is because I'm going to add some paint and see if we can do something different here. Hey, Steven, can you see me okay still? Okay, because, oh, that didn't work. I um, I can't really see anybody of the chat or hear anybody, so. Yeah, I didn't really like the way this one's turning out. This one's not so great. Let's try blue on it, see if that helps it at all. I don't know, what do you think to that improve it? Some pretty effects here. I don't know if you can see that, that's, that's nice. I would like to paint on this one. I think this would be fun too. Okay. So we've done quite a few backgrounds. I wish I could get you back on the chat. I'm not able to see my chat right now. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. I'm going to take a pause here and see if I can get back to the chat. I'm going to try to open this in a different window here, you guys, because I'm really missing being able to talk to you and chat with you all. I haven't hopefully lost you, but I'm <clears throat> trying to get back to my chat for some reason. I, I can't get to it on my iPad. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying this um, this fluid art. I, um, I'm in love with it, so I'll be doing quite a bit more. And I think I'll put out a separate video in, in the pendant series uh, with finishing up some of these backgrounds that we've been doing and um, just kind of seeing how... Um, how they look. And I'm going to dot on a few that I, I did before um, we started here so we can see how that looks.
Okay. Well, at any rate, this is taking way too long. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep going. There's a couple more things um, that I thought I would share with you. Um, so I've got some dry pieces that I have already done. And I thought I would share these with you. So this one, I am, um, I don't, I hope you can see that pattern. So this is uh, when we did the one with the swirl, I just put, applied the, you know, dip the paint and then I use one of my dotting tools to swirl that around a little bit. So I'm going to try to dot on that. And then this was another one that I did um, that I just love the fact that it has that sort of, um, sort of wispy kind of look there. I think that's really pretty. So let's see what we can do with just dotting on these and um, trying out some, uh, you know, trying to create like a little mandala or something like that. Let me see if I can. I'm as zoomed in as I can be here. So I've got some of my regular dotting tools. I've got some of my silicone brushes in case I want to do any swishes or swooshes or anything like that. And just get some black paint here or some other color paint. just using regular craft paint now. Oh, I think I don't want to use black on this one. This is a little too. Um, here, let's use a completely different color. I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to use a little bit of red. So hopefully it'll show up well. Just get a little bit on my tool here. My hole is here, so I'm going to orient, you know, try to kind of keep that in mind as I'm dotting just to see how it might look. Just use my tools and let's just see what we can do here. See, that looks nice. I'm just following sort of the line of the, the way the paint dried. Kind of just moving it around. Just kind of freehanding a little bit. We could introduce another color. and add as much or as little additional pattern as we wanted to. So I, I don't know, I think, you know, kind of a little minimalist, I think that would be really pretty. I might add a few more just to, here I'm gonna hold it up and dot a little bit more. So I'll use a smaller tool and maybe can take a look, see how that might look. And just adding as much as we want or as little as we want. And then once we let that dry, we could go in and top dot that. I just think it's really pretty. It's a nice addition to have the dots against that fluid kind of background. 
Isn't that pretty? Again, you know, with your color choices, you might try some different, um, some different colors. So there's one. Now with this one, with the swirls, I think I'm going to use, um, I am going to use black for this one. We'll see if that show how that shows up, if it shows up at all. And I'm going to use my silicone brush. And I'm just going to let's see how I want to do this. I'll drop a little bit of paint here. I, don't know if, I hope you can see that. I'm just adding a little bit of extra. Can you see that okay? I might try moving to some white and see if that like, makes it any better, easier to see. There, we can just add, you know, any little elements that we like. Oops. Kind of holding this up is a little harder for me, but I think you get the point that you can just follow the curve and then add some additional detail that way. I think that's really pretty. And then we'll go in with some dots. Try some dotting and see how that, if that helps us. That's a pretty curve. So this is a not, you know, this is just kind of, we're just playing here to sort of see different techniques that we might be able to use. And I think, um, you know, that could be pretty. I The other thing I wanted to share with you is I noticed that I can take this, like uh, this is, this base coat is dry. So let's say I'm not particularly thrilled with that particular design, which I am not, by the way. Um, I can remove it while it's still wet, just like if we had a, you know, if this were a, a base coated canvas, I can get that off and start over if I need to. And I'm ready to start again. And I kind of like this one the way it is. I might, I think I would add a little bit of dotting to it just because I, I feel like it could benefit from some. I might think about the color a little bit, you know, which color I might like to use. But that's a really pretty pattern. So let's, here's the other one that we just dotted. And again, we could go in and top dot or add different colors or whatever we wanted to do. This one, I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to uh, do a video specifically on this type of design. It won't be the same, of course, because they're going to be different every single time. 
but I think I'm going to do something along this line for a future video. And then here's the first pendant that I did that, um, you know, was in the invite the uh, event invitation. And I think that's really pretty. And then let's look at the ones that we've done so far. There's a couple in here that I did um, previous, uh, just as practice. But here, let's look at the ones that we've done while we've just been on this video. So we did this one. We did this one. This one. This was these two. We used a straw to blow on them. Here's another couple of ones. This is the one that we did with the um, with the glitter paint. And I can see that it's breaking up. You can see the glitter. The glitter's in there, and it's really pretty, but the cells that formed have kind of lost their definition. And we did this one. Oops. Here's one that I did before the, sh the uh, live here. Um, where I just used a tool to kind of do a spiral type effect, and then I would uh, paint on that one. Here's another one that we did. That one turned out really pretty. That one's got some nice, interesting designs in it. And then here's the one that we did tonight with the swirl. That one I think will be really pretty with some dotting on it. So those are the different ones that we've done tonight. Just give you another little look at those. Some of them, you know, a little better than others. I'm not too, I don't know, maybe with this one with some dotting could be improved. This one is gorgeous. I love that one. You could think about, you know, if you had a piece like that, whether you wanted to do dotting. These are really pretty, even as is, or you might want to put a little bit of dotting, and that's where we blew with the straw. So those are the pendants. I hope that I'm going to come back to see, uh, to say goodbye to you all. I'm sorry I lost the chat. That's so irritating to me. Um, I always have these little technical challenges. I guess I'm not that savvy on this stuff. Um, so anywho, uh, let me come back and say goodbye. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this. And I hope you're enjoying the pendant series. So let me know um, what you think about the pendant series because I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So I hope you are too. So leave me some feedback. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, hope that you are enjoying this. Hope you enjoy the lives. Um, this, we've been, I did a couple of premieres where we just chatted. This one was a live so we could, uh, you could see firsthand how long things take and how to put stuff together uh, in real time. So um, that was really a lot of fun. So I want to thank you for joining. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you'd be a subscriber. That would be great. If you like the video and you want to see more like this, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment about some things you'd like to see, particularly in the pendant series. So what I'm trying to do with that series is kind of show you different, way, you know, a dotting pattern, of course, but I've been using very simple patterns, but also how to make your own jewelry components so you can design for yourself and try out some different things and see how easy it really is to make your own necklaces or your own uh, custom links and stuff like that. So you really get a, a sense of, that you can do it and that you can create unique and different things for your craft fair, for gift giving. Mother's Day is coming up. Um, your mom would probably love, uh, you know, something handmade by you. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for joining me in my studio. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.